Yo, what's up guys, guys, it's your host with the most mustachioed Grievo, as always, bringing you guys One Piece, the next piece of One Piece, chapter 1032, and we're into this one, alright, so a lot of people are going to be complaining about this chapter, a lot of people are going to be talking about this chapter and stuff, and you know what I, all I got to say about it is, at least we're focusing on shit that matters, at least we're actually focusing on shit that matters, we're moving the plot along here, like, the, the, there's some slow issues here right now, as, as far as I can tell, because we're going to get, apparently, it looks like a whole plot line with the numbers and how they like Yamato or some bullshit. Uh, so that's kind of annoying. But either way, Marco and Izo flying past Big Mom, not giving a shit. They're, they're just going forth. They're just going forth to take care of this stupid thing that Oda came up with. It's like, Oda, kill some people. Scabbards are dead. Scabbards, three out of nine should be already dead. Four out of nine, actually. Four out of nine should already be dead. And it's just like they're not. And now we have friggin' the last thing for the Kazumono clan. Oh, the Kazumono clan, whatever the fuck Orochi's clan is. And it's, it, and it's this bullshit thing, this fire Oni thing coming through the floor. And it's like, a oh, piss off. You know, so they're all trying to deal with that. So Marco's taking uh, I, Izo over to that thing. Now, we have Apu, we have x we have Yamato, and then we have Fuga, who apparently is willing to listen to Yamato. And it's like, Fuga, let's go this way. And it's like, okay. <laughs> and Brooke and Robin get away from CP0 as a result of this uh, thing coming after them. They're chasing them down. Brooke and Robin are about to fight CP0, but then boom, this thing with flames. Now all of a sudden, it's a flame. All of a sudden, not only is this thing is a goddamn like ink monster, now it's got fire powers. Now it's got the Mara Mara no Me on top of being an ink blob monster from a dead guy. A dude who should have been dead for fucking chapters long. So, yeah. So, you guys can tell that I'm not super thrilled about this chapter. I'm thrilled about the direction. It's like, Jesus Christ, Oda. Just give us Kaido versus Luffy. That's all we give a shit about at this point. Zoro, like, like... The Sanji stuff is just pissing me off. But if you guys still care about that, that's fine. But either way, Queen got to go down. King got to go down. Big Mom got to go down. And Kaido got to go down. Four fights. We are concerned and give a shit. Most of the community gives a shit about four fights. And at least this chapter showed us one. One of those fights. Why? Why? CP0 is being treated like a bitch anyway, so I don't know what if anybody expected. Oh my god! CP0! They're doing it too! They're doing it too! And it's like, ah, Jesus H. Christ. Like, they're not gonna do anything, guys. You don't introduce late game people like this and they're actually good. So anyways, um, they, they run off and CP0 is still mad and saying, uh, and then we have a poo and x Drake doing their shit. Apparently a poo knows that x Drake is part of S.W.O.R.D. now. CP0 apparently knows that Drake is part of S.W.O.R.D. And uh, Apu and x Drake are now going to fight CP0, apparently. Uh, they're fighting the two guys that are after, Robin. And um, the head of CP0, apparently, the masked dude is apparently the head of CP0. That's what most people assume. I don't know if we got confirmation for that or not. Either way, x Drake and Apu are now going to fight, team up, and they're going to fight against the CP0 agents while Robin and Brooke get away. Now, once again, I never assumed, I already said that the moment they said Captain Nika Robin, I'm like, we are not having a damsel in distress thing. We already had that. We have two female characters on the crew. They have both had the damsel in distress storyline. Technically, VV as well as an honorary straw hat, but whatever. The three female characters have already had Arlong Park, Annie's Lobby, and Alabasta. We've had our female characters be our damsel in distress. We're not going to, not only are we not going to do damsel in distress for the fourth fucking time, we're not going to do it for a fourth time with the same fucking character. Robin is not helpless. She will not be captured. I called that right away, and I think this is a useless storyline. I really do. So, Oda, Oda needs to pick up the thing and realize, just, just meathead right now. Meathead this shit. Because we'll get all the dialogue, we'll get all the, post Wano will be a lore-based fucking Chapter upon chapter of greatness. We all know it. We're going to get a bunch of lore. We're going to get a bunch of dialogue. We're going to get a bunch of crazy bombshells dropped on us, right? We all know that. But during Wano, we're at the tail end of Wano. Just show us the fights we care about. Finally, half a chapter in for shit I don't care about, we jump in to King versus Zoro. And then King decides... Oh, oh boy.
a helicopter triceratops. Then a rocket launching brachiosaurus. Now we have a pterodactyl, a pterodon, whatever, that can pull back its fucking face apparently with its own wing, snap forward, and shoot it like a goddamn its head like a beam, but it's not really a beam. It, I, I don't even know what the fuck happened. Pulls back the horn on its head. Let's go. Boom like a boomerang, but the head, the horn, everything's still attached to King. What the fuck was he firing at him? His spit? Like, I, I, I don't understand what happened. Like, was it a beam? A beam from the leather? From the gimp suit that he's wearing? Like, ugh. So we finally jump back to the Zoro vs. King fight, and it's a gimmick. Another fucking gimmick. You're taking the serious fight. I don't give a shit if Sanji, the fucking loser, wants to fight a gimmicky fucking commander. I don't give a fuck. But the disservice now to Zoro. Zoro was on the rooftop gang. Zoro was blocking shit. Zoro cut Kaido. And now we're into this bullshit with this gimmick fucking like look like... oh, God damn. And then, and then, couldn't block it. It's like a beam, says Zoro. Fucking, uh, King's just still flying around. Like, he didn't just launch a projectile, but apparently it grew right back. I don't even know what the fuck happened. And then, just in prehistoric times, this is how pterodons used to fight. It's like, no. I know what Oda's doing right here, but I don't fucking like it. Like, keep the zones the zones. Like, Christ's sakes. They aren't eating rumble balls. Why the fuck are they able to do this shit? Unless... Like, please tell me, like, like, Sasuke and King, please tell me Queen modified them. I could accept Queen modifying. Chopper modified, and I've been okay with that. If Queen modified them, that's fine, but I need a line of dialogue to tell me that, because if this is just this bullshit, I'm just, like, Christ's sakes. And then King call, and Zoro calls him out and says, so, wait a minute, uh, so do they all have flames on their backs too? King's, no. It's like, well, then get your story straight. Like, because even Zoro, Zoro's calling out this bullshit like the rest of the community is. It's like, Terrans didn't fight that way. Brachiosaurs don't fight that way. Triceratops don't, aren't helicopters. So fuck up with this whole, oh, this is how dinosaurs used to fight. No, they fucking didn't. You don't, you have flames on your back? Was that a pterodon thing too? No. Well, then make up your mind. Either all your bullshit is dinosaur or none of it is. You can't have it both ways, right? So even Zoro's calling out this shit. The one good panel of this entire chapter is Zoro calling out this bullshit for the dinosaur zones. And then we have Zoro trying to fight once again using the great dragon twister, trying to fight against King. But King, of course, is actually uh, fighting at every turn. King seems to be overpowering Zoro. Now, you could argue that Zoro is not at 100%. I would argue he's at least at 80%, though, the drug... Like, it's letting him uh, um, go at least to 80%, you could argue, 75, 80% at least, if not 100. I would argue that Zoro is clearly not at 100% right now. He's definitely not clean. He's definitely not at 100. But he should be able to fight. And after being able to fight Kaido and fight Big Mom, you'd think that King would not be that. But King is still an arguably good challenge. But this is a good thing for Zoro. Another good thing that came out of this chapter is that Zoro is struggling. Zoro is struggling against King, and that's what we did need to see. We needed to see this. We need Zoro to have an actual fucking opponent. Not one that he that's going to roll over him like Kaido, but one that he can actually do basically Luffy Katakuri. Zoro needs a Katakuri in the new world. King might be that fight. And it looks like it's shaping up that way. This is an excellent thing. And then, um, Zoro even acknowledges that after fighting and with the wings and the flying techniques and the zone form and stuff, Zoro even acknowledges he doesn't think he can win without knowing exactly what he is. If he can figure out what he is, at first everyone was probably like, I don't think I can win. And, oh, shit. But it's like, no, no. It's, I don't think I can win without knowing what he is. He's got to figure out, he knows what the zone is. Now he's got to figure out the race of this guy. Then maybe he can find out a weak spot. He can figure out a weakness. If he realizes what 
what he is, maybe he can come up with an idea. So will that help? No, it's a little weak sauce, but either way, he's hearing a sound, a shamisen. He's hearing a shamisen play, and all of a sudden, Enma is fucking, once again, sucking the hockey out of him and burst into flames by the looks of it. Just completely, Enma burst into flames, sucks out all the hockey out of his arm, and Zoro's like, Enma, what are you doing? And it's like, holy shit, what is going on? Then we jump to a dude who should already be dead, Orochi, with Komurasaki is apparently there, playing the Shemsen. So, the Shemsen was being played. Zoro is, uh, clearly hears it, so I'm going to lead myself to believe that Hyori is actually here and is playing this thing and is pretending right now to be a part of Orochi's like light lives. Likewise, my lord, all I want is for, for us to be together. I want us to spend the rest of our lives together and just continues to play. Clearly, Enma is reacting to the Shamsen being played. Maybe Toki taught her this. Maybe Odin taught her this is that Enma's true strength will be acknowledged when and if it fights against a great sword. And if the Shamsen, the tune plays, sort of like the Ocarina of Time sort of idea, we're going the Zelda route with this. Maybe the music adds to the power. That's why Enma reacted as strongly as it did. Who the hell knows? Either way, One Piece chapter 1032, not exactly the best chapter. I'm annoyed at a lot of aspects, but one, two things I'm grateful for. Number one, at least we're going back to shit we actually give a fuck about, which is Zoro versus King. And also, Zoro is fucking struggling. We needed Zoro to have a true opponent all to himself, not Luffy's opponent, which is Kaido, not anybody else's opponent, like Laws or kids. We needed Zoro to fight an actual name level person on his own. We needed this, and we also needed him to struggle to show his growth. Like Luffy, Zoro gets better through combat, and arguably, in the new world, Zoro has not fought to his level yet. He has not been able to fight to his level to go above and beyond till Wano. Till Wano, Zoro has not had the potential, the ability to blossom, to bloom until he was in the rooftop gang. And now here's his second opportunity to bloom. Luffy's been blooming this whole time, fighting multiple opponents between people like Dofi, you know, and Katakuri, and now Kaido and Big Mom. He's had the opportunity. And Zoro hasn't had that. So now we're going to get Zoro that. That's what's going to happen. So the one good thing we can take from this chapter is that. I hope we clear up the Apu, Drake, and CP0 stuff that nobody cares about. I hope we clear up that. Well, maybe some people do, and that's great. But really, really, we need to get this ball rolling. We need to get this ball rolling. We have we wasted too much time on Sanji's fucking soap opera. Now we need to get to uh, some real shit. And apparently we are doing that. So, yeah. This video might get a lot of dislikes. You know, some people probably just really like the chapter and they're like, no, I like X Drake and stuff. And I'm like, I like them too. But we spend too much time wasting time on some stuff that doesn't matter. And now I just want to get to the main act. I need to get to the final battles. I want to see the final battles. You know? So, maybe I'm just hurrying it along. But this has already been the longest arc in One Piece. And it's still fucking going. And honestly, if it was all hype, that'd be fine, but it's not. So let's just recognize the faults of a weekly series. Hopefully uh, there's no break. It doesn't seem like there's a break next week. I'm hoping for better things from chapter 1033. That's all I can say. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget the fourth most important thing. Drink responsibly as always. I'll see you back here next time. Peace out.